In this Total War Warhammer 3 video, I'm going to talk about the game's mechanics and features to help you decide if this gargantuan RTS is what you've been looking for. Regardless of whether or not you're new to the genre, learning the ropes won't be as daunting as in the previous iterations of the series since there's a dedicated prologue campaign to guide players accordingly, and we'll also have a beginner's guide here on YouTube if you need further help. So if you're interested in diving into the nuances of Total War Warhammer 3 and you want to know more about its trial period and future offers, then this video is for you. Before we get into it though, first a big shout out to Sega for sponsoring this video. If you guys are planning to pick up Total Warhammer 3 and any of its DLC content, be sure to use the link below to help support the channel. Total Warhammer 3's main campaign is set in the Realm of Chaos. Here, the bear god Ursin was imprisoned by the demon prince Belakor to steal his power. With the help of an advisor, your goal is to get to Ursin before he becomes a distant memory of the past. Can you defeat traitors and control your empire until you reach the bear god? What makes players spend hundreds of hours playing this title is the amount of content and distinct gameplay features every faction brings to the table. For instance, choosing the Grand Cafe race will have you restore harmony by balancing yin and yang, whether you're researching new technologies or upgrading buildings. Comparatively, if you were to select Corn, the goal will be to bathe in the skulls of your enemies by constantly engaging in wars to effectively improve your army. Total War Warhammer 3 is a free-for-all type of game which provides you with the necessary tools to make tough decisions and fully immerse yourself into the world of Warhammer. Combat-wise, you'll be declaring wars and raiding structures to dominate and grow your empire. Rather than a hex-based grid, you'll be commanding multiple armies with the help of lords and heroes. These armies can then be grouped accordingly based on the strategies you wish to execute. Additionally, instead of using action points, large-scale battles are executed in real time so you can pause, play, and hit fast-forward if you find the default pace is too slow. In Total War Warhammer 3, there are three campaign modes to choose from. You have the Lost God, the Realm of Chaos, and Immortal Empires. As mentioned previously, the Lost God is specifically created for players who are either new to the Total Warhammer universe or for those who need a refresher. The entire tutorial takes about three to five hours to finish and is a great stepping stone into Warhammer 3 since the basics of every functionality are explained in detail. This mode also serves as a decent prologue to the main story. However, in the Lost God, you won't be able to choose another race, and instead you'll be part of the Kislev Expedition. Jumping to the story-driven base game, or the Realm of Chaos, you can now pick from any of the nine factions including the Demons of Chaos, Kislev, and Korn to name a few. It's worth noting that each of them consists of backstories and mechanics, which are distinct from one another, making for an enriching experience every time. And finally, there's the Immortal Empires campaign. This is the biggest sandbox campaign mode to date, having been released last August. When you select it, you'll see a vast array of 23 races if you happen to own all of the DLCs. But if you only have Warhammer 3, then you'll still be able to jump into the Immortal Empires campaign to experience the game differently, where you'll encounter other land masses and units. If you're interested in playing the factions not included in the base game, then these can be bought separately via DLCs. For instance, if the Vampire Coast sounds appealing, then you're going to have to purchase Warhammer 2's Curse of the Vampire DLC, not Warhammer 2 itself. Another recent Total Warhammer 3 DLC is the Champions of Chaos, which lets you choose four new lords from the Warriors of Chaos race. There's Valkyo the Bloody representing Korn, so she thrives on bloodletting or the almost endless slaughter of hapless victims to gain the blessings of the Blood God. And then you have Festus the Leech Lord, a doctor who has pledged his allegiance with one of the most infamous Chaos Gods, Nurgle himself. Together with his units, you'll primarily poison foes and spread corruption. Total War Warhammer 3 features large-scale battles that can take about 30 minutes to finish depending on the difficulty, the armies you've raised, and strategies that you utilize. The game features some of the most engaging combat encounters because of its depth and complexity coupled with the tactics you need to execute to wipe out your enemies without mercy. You basically have total control over how you wish to lead your troops into victory. Right from the start, you'll be grouping units together so they move at a similar pace, identifying their initial and optimal positions, and seeking out terrains where you'll gain an advantage. For instance, troops can hide in the forest to momentarily conceal themselves and then attack the enemy from behind. This maneuver is also going to be very useful for flanking in order to catch them unaware. Moreover, you'll be recruiting different unit types due to their strength they possess. For example, cavalry moves faster to engage enemies right away, even those hidden in specific terrains, but they're weak against spearmen who excel in charging at larger targets. With the help of the Unit Details panel, you'll quickly see their strengths, weaknesses, and stats to make necessary choices, especially when the encounter becomes more challenging. But you need to be careful. If your units become too exhausted to fight, they can flee from combat, thereby decreasing your chances of winning. Since Total War Warhammer 3 is an RTS, you can pause the battle to regroup while still issuing orders. These will then be executed the moment you hit the play button. 
Additionally, you can refer to the bar located next to the timer to give you an indication of the tide of combat, whether you're on your way to victory or not. Next, you must be cautious when it comes to enhancing the abilities and spells of your lords and heroes because these greatly impact how well they perform in combat. In The Lost God, you can activate Yuri's Ursin Roar to inspire melee allies through his leadership, thereby increasing the power of respective attacks. Note that once you invest points into certain abilities and you exit the skills menu, you won't be able to reverse these changes, so pay attention to what you're doing. In some cases, you can auto-resolve battles, especially if the battle result says that your victory is imminent, thereby allowing you to save time. Although when choosing this option, you don't have control over the number of units you may potentially lose, since the predicted number of casualties isn't precise. This feature is also applicable if you intend to siege settlements to fight for control over them. But the difference with siege encounters is you need to first avail special equipment to then raid the structure and its units over time. Once they've been weakened, you can then engage in battle either through auto-resolve or manually fighting on the field. In addition to the immersive combat experience, Total War Warhammer 3 equally delivers when it comes to settlement management. This includes recruiting units, lords, and heroes together with upgrading buildings to boost defenses against invaders and to increase the types of soldiers that become available to you. You'll also need to invest your research points into certain technologies. Doing so will improve your recruitment rank, leadership, and capabilities of units in battle. In some cases, though, waging war isn't always the ideal option, especially since a lot of your resources, money, and units will quickly be depleted. As such, you'll need to form diplomatic relationships with other factions. You or they can offer a peace treaty, agree on a non-aggressive pact, and even form a military alliance to request support in the event of war. Not only can you avoid the cost of war, but you also have allies who will protect you in the event of an invasion. Should a treaty be broken by you, though, you'll potentially antagonize several factions all at once. However, note that being diplomatic won't always be advantageous. Instead, it will depend on the faction you've chosen. If you're in exile of corn, then opting to engage in war more frequently will yield better results in terms of growing your forces. After performing all the activities during your turn, you'll need to press the hourglass and wait for the factions in the campaign to do theirs. Additionally, you'll need to address events that happen around the world. In one Grand Cathay campaign, for example, I had to choose what to do with a box of delights presented by an alchemist. I could either increase the yin or yang, slay the alchemist, or simply continue on with my life where I chose the latter. There are a lot of these events which will pop up randomly, so it'll be up to you to make the right decisions. In connection with settlement management, you can group armies together depending on the number of lords and heroes you have, and settlements or provinces you'll be conquering and managing along the way. What makes this so much fun is that Total War Warhammer 3's visuals are stunning, thereby encouraging you to explore the ends of the world. They're even thematic to the faction you've chosen, so for the Exiles of Corn, you can expect to see darker colors and a somber environment raging with fire, hatred, and anger, whereas the Grand Cathay's province depicts a rather serene and well-lit atmosphere consisting of vast fields of green. Regardless of the campaign mode you chose, you're going to be given a series of missions in the form of quests. Completing these will improve your relations with factions, possibly allowing you to form alliances. If you were to finish all of the quests listed under victory conditions, then you'll win the campaign. This is a bit different for Immortal Empires, though, where you can choose the specific condition you intend to complete, whether it's the short, long, or domination campaign victory. Doing so will involve destroying factions, invading and controlling settlements, or even sacking numerous provinces, but again, the choice is entirely up to you. For those of you who are interested in dipping their toes into the RTS genre or are fans of the Warhammer Fantasy universe, I encourage you to give Total War Warhammer 3 a try. There is currently a free trial weekend running from March 9th through the 13th, and this would be the perfect time to try out the title with zero commitment, because the base game alone should provide you with dozens of hours of content. And for veterans of Total War Warhammer 1 and 2, there's also a treat for you. If you wish to play Total War Warhammer 3 for longer periods of time, you can purchase it at a 33% discount from March 9th until March 23rd on the Steam Store. Final thoughts. Total War Warhammer 3 provides the ultimate experience for Warhammer Fantasy and RTS newcomers and tabletop fans alike. From commanding multiple armies to maintaining control over the provinces you govern, it's nearly impossible to run out of things to do in this nuanced game. Although there are a few bugs such as stutters and rare crashes when certain choices are made in events, these aren't deal breakers in my opinion given Warhammer 3's strengths. Battles which take time to understand and master are incredibly immersive and players are given the freedom to make important decisions that can radically affect their factions. Certainly a lot of thought has been placed into creating a game which closely mimics the brutality and nature of the Warhammer universe. If you want to get into the Total War Warhammer series, then Warhammer 3 is a great game to pick up because of its beginner-friendly tutorials and streamlined gameplay mechanics. Be sure to use our links below to support the channel if you plan to pick it up. 
So what are you guys' thoughts on Total War Warhammer 3? Do you guys like this sort of game? Do you like this gameplay? I got to stream this on Twitch a few months back. Really enjoyed my time with this game. What do you guys think? Let us know in the comments below.